Hello everyone, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter. Last night as I was getting ready to go to bed, I was reading a journal, the Journal of the American Medical Association, and I was very pleasantly surprised to come upon an article, you'll see a link to it, entitled Nutrition Education in Medical School, Residency Training and Practice. Uh, this is a study, uh, rather an article, an editorial, if you will, by Dr. Stephen DeVries, Walter Willett, and Robert O. Banau, uh, that talks about a couple of things that are re relevant to physician training, uh, and specifically the fact that physicians, by and large here in America, MDs anyhow, get precious little training as it relates to nutrition, and that has huge consequences. We recognize the incredible importance of nutrition and providing nutritional information to patients and to the public at large. In terms of disease prevention, those statistics stand on their own and are extremely compelling. Let me read from you uh, a couple of points from the article. Nutrition education in medical school is rudimentary, great word, at best, and limited to uh, for the duration of graduate medical education for many specialties. Requirements for meaningful nutrition education in all phases of medical training are long overdue. Gosh, I 100% uh, agree with that statement. Uh, we've really got to emphasize the importance of nutrition to keep people healthy. This is a powerful leverage point as it relates to preventive medicine. And they cite a couple of interesting examples whereby intervening with people to change their diets has had a powerful impact in terms of risk reduction for future issues. Let me be specific, and I'm reading from the article now. In randomized clinical trials, dietary interventions have proven to both prevent and manage important diseases such as diabetes and cardiovascular disease. Here's the example. A Mediterranean-style diet was shown to reduce recurrent cardiovascular events by 72%. That's not medicine. That's a Mediterranean-style diet reduced recurrent cardiovascular events by 72%. Uh, and in individuals with elevated fasting blood glu glucose, these are people who do not yet have a diagnosis of diabetes, a combination of dietary changes and physical activity reduce the risk of developing diabetes, in other words, progressing to full-blown diabetes, by 58% in comparison with using a drug, in this case metformin, that was associated with a 31% reduced rate of developing type 2 diabetes if you're pre-diabetic. 58% if you do the diet and exercise, and 31% if you simply take metformin. Uh, they didn't talk about this, but that study actually was quite interesting because the mortality rate, the risk of death, was actually twice as high in the group taking the metformin in comparison to the group that just changed their diet and began to exercise. They go on to talk thereafter about uh, post-medical uh, school, uh, post-residency specialty programs like internal medicine and cardiology and what their requirements are uh, in terms of even what their recommendations are for having these individuals learn about nutrition. Let me read what they said. Requirements for nutrition education are lacking in specialty training programs, again like cardiology and internal medicine. For example, the current Accreditation Council for Graduate Medical Education program requirement document for internal medicine. This is a document that's put together indicating what people should be studying if they're going to become board certified in internal medicine, has 42 pages. The document for uh, cardiovascular disease fellowship has 41 pages. Here's the good part. Neither document includes the words nutrition or diet. We're talking about internal medicine. We're talking about cardiologists and in the guidelines for what these individuals should be learning during their fellowship programs, uh, there's not one mention of the word nutrition, nor is there any mention of the word diet. Why do I feel like Rachel Maddow right now in, in telling you all this? I tell you this because it's really very, very important. Medical education focuses on disease process and remedying, remedying those diseases with uh, generally a pharmaceutical intervention if not surgery or something like that. 
And that's how I was trained. Uh, I received in medical school zero training in nutrition with the exception of becoming aware of certain deficiency uh, states uh, like pellagra beriberi and scurvy, which is the deficiency of vitamin C that uh, I will certainly uh, be very surprised if I ever see in my lifetime. So good news from the Journal of the American Medical Association, raising awareness that we really need to emphasize that our young doctors and doctors-to-be really need to spend a significant amount of time learning about the most fundamental choice that people make in terms of their health, and that is nutrition. Thanks for joining me. I'm Dr. David Perlmutter. Bye for now.